Hey YouTube, a few uh, weeks ago I did a review on this knife for uh, Texas Blades and I really, I gave it a decent review and it was in the aspect of it being a fillet knife because that's what they market this knife as uh, and I say in there I don't think it would make a good fillet knife but I do think it would make a good kitchen knife or a good kitchen prep knife like if you're <coughs> bringing fresh food, fruits and vegetables with you out on the trail or whatever uh, you could prepare it with this never said it was a survival knife but if you look at it and I hope I'm getting the right uh, model here but it looks similar uh, shockingly similar to the more a companion, not the materials they use or anything like that, but just the handle, the blade, the length, uh, the thickness of the handle. And I wish I had my buddy's Mora here to, to compare them so I could just show you. Uh, in fact, he told me to take it, but uh, taking a man's knife is like taking a man's gun. If you're not handing them a fistful of cash, you really shouldn't do it. So, this is the only thing I have, but. And here's what I think happened, because they know this is not a fillet knife. It's way too thick, and it's kind of short. Uh, I mean, it, a fillet knife can be that length, but there's no way the blade should be that thick on it. Uh, so I don't think they made it as a fillet knife. What I think happened is, is they made it as a more a knockoff, and <laughs> after a little bit of testing with it, they decided that they better not say it's uh, anything compared to a Mora. Uh, in fact, they even called it the wahoo killer and put a fish on it and i think they just said well we'll just market it as a fillet knife uh, after a little bit of testing and and i'm pretty sure they broke up but since they want to make it look like a mora clipper uh i'm just going to say mora because i don't know if clipper is the correct uh model i'm saying so i'm sure i'll be corrected if i'm wrong but we're going to treat this knife like a mora knife today we're going to do some things that I know a Mora knife can do because, like I said, my buddy, he's a Mora freak. He has all of them. Uh, he, it, it, that's the end-all game to, to knives to, for him is Mora. So I, I don't like them. I don't buy them. I like them. I just don't buy them. Uh, just never have gotten around to buying one. I may one day and, and do a review on it and try it out for a little while but in Texas we're not allowed to carry fixed blade knives so most of the knives that are in my packs uh, besides my field dress kit are folding knives and if you get caught with a field dress kit they know what you're doing uh, you know you show them your hunting license you show them your tag hey I'm going hunting you know uh, so most cops will let you slide on stuff like that but if you just have a fixed blade knife in your pack uh, a lot of them out there I mean they can legally arrest you for it so I just rather not even give them a reason so I don't carry fixed blade knives uh, so we're gonna start this test off with just some light stuff you can see here I've been feathering this stick a little bit we're gonna do some real light feathering then we're gonna work our way you can see the thicknesses of these are all different we're gonna split this wood and see if we can break it or see if it breaks rather I'm not gonna try to break the knife but I'm going to split this wood and see if it does break. And if it doesn't break, we'll probably go with something a little bit thicker and see if it breaks that. Uh, go with a full limb or something. Because I split this wood with this little bitty neck knife. It's a little uh, Smith & Wesson HRT claw. And it surprised me. I gave this, I just bashed this knife in the review. I hated it. Uh, said it was ridiculous but after I cleaned it up and got to use it a little bit I, it's it's user friendly I like it so uh, I need to revise that review but I haven't yet so let's start with some real light feathering and see what happens well it's definitely you know earlier I was doing some really small light feathering and it was working well, but it seems to be working with the heavier stuff too. I was doing this kind of stuff earlier. Some littler stuff, but it, it's doing the big feathering as well. And that's how I feather a stick anyway. I feather it from here to about here. 
all the way around preferably a lot smaller piece uh, thinner that is and just feather it out like that and that's how I feather my sticks that I start my fires with so I don't uh, you know usually use something that thick but that is how I do my feathering let's just see if we can kinda make a spear here somewhat Oh, don't hit the camera tripod. It's definitely a lot sharper than I thought it was going to be. I figured, honestly, doing this, it would roll the edge noticeably. And it's really not rolling the edge. I really thought this task would, uh, would, uh, destroy the edge on the knife, but it's really not. And this isn't, uh, dry wood it is a softer wood it's mulberry wood but it's not dried out this wood isn't rotten in fact you can still see some green in it uh, I'm pretty sure the camera is not going to pick it up but you can still see some green in this wood especially where I've just recently did some feathering you can see a green tint to it so the wood's still kind of green nice and let's look at the blade really kind of closely really nothing done to it huh because earlier when I was doing some feather and I was doing it with the tip and now if you feel the tip there's an indention right there I don't know, maybe I just said a knot or something like that. I really was thinking it would destroy this blade doing that, uh, at least the edge of it. And it didn't. So let's move on to the next test. Uh, next test, we're going to be splitting this stuff. So we'll be right back. camera in a bad place so I really can't uh, give it as good a swings as I want to. I'm trying to show you, you see that green in that wood, see the difference from this side to this side, this is the side I just split open, you can kind of see it there. A little bit of a green tint to it right here. So this isn't rotten wood. Alright, let's try the big piece. Biggest piece I have anyway. I may have to go cut a limb. I should have put the camera a little higher up than I did. thinking this thing was going to just break the first time I hit it. Let's smack it kind of hard and see what happens. Two dollar more knockoff. Who'd have thunk it? Uh, and I really haven't been beating on this thing. I smacked it hard the last time, but the first times I only have about 
I don't know, eight inches there to swing on it so before I smack the camera. I really was thinking that would uh, at least tear the edge up a little bit and it hasn't seemed to yet so we're going to throw some more tests at it. Uh, here coming up soon we'll have with more videos on that. I'm going to cut some big limbs up and if that don't break it then we're going to try to chop cut a small tree down that I have on the side of my house that doesn't need to be there. Uh, so we're going to try to chop cut that or baton cut it whatever the hell you want to call it baton chop I don't know we're going to try that out and see what happens so yeah uh, I still wouldn't call it a survival knife obviously they dubbed it a fillet knife for a reason you know it's too thin to be a survival knife uh, but you could definitely do some light batoning and some feathering with it so far that we know of uh, next video, plan on seeing some abuse on this thing because I'm just going to beat the hell out of it and see if we can't make a break. Uh, really thought it would do it this time, honestly. Uh, then again, I wasn't smacking it too hard, so I don't know. We'll have to see on the next video. Thanks for watching, YouTube.